we're at PGM Reball in Hinkley, Leicester. Now, you guys, ball screws is your business. Yeah. An engineer, his machine's gone down, his ball screw needs repairing, servicing, whatever it may be. What, what happens? Okay, well, they send it to us. Um, if they need a price over the phone, we can generally give them a rough estimate of what the price is going to be. Um, but when it arrives, we strip it all down uh, to initially assess it, um, clean everything, because generally not all the damage you can see without it being completely cleaned. We tag it, give it a serial number or job number, um, and raise a job card, and then everything that happens to that ball screw is either recorded on the job card or is referenced um, with photographs and things according to that particular job number, so we've got a complete audit trail. It's then brought into the workshop for assessment, so they will take a look at the extent of the damage and make a decision as to whether it's repairable in an economic sense or not. Uh, if it's not repairable economically, then we won't charge for that. Uh, we'll try to source a replacement for the customer. If we can repair it, uh, then we'll take a look at all the damage, we'll chase out any damage on th uh, things like journal ends, we'll take a look at the bearings, um, and then we'll reball with new ball bearings. We generally use grade 5 or grade 10 ball bearings because they're much more precise and they're generally much rounder than... Um, so what's the standard size in? So the standard, yeah, the standard size of ball bearings from a machine tool manufacturer is about grade 20. Um, so we'll always tend to replace with better ball bearings effectively. And sometimes we can re-ball a ball screw um, perhaps four or five times before we find exactly the right size of ball bearing to use. We can only tell that we've repaired it successfully by doing the testing afterwards. So it'll, we'll put it on the rig like this and we'll do a digital torque test to measure the load. Um, and then we uh, record the ball size we've used, the batch number that it's come from, uh, the load testing that we've recorded. Um, and then we'll um, pack it in a nice clean box Box and send it back to the customer. So as good as as good as new, if not better. Absolutely, yes, yeah. I mean, we've had some ball screws um, come back to us with 30 years of use. Um, and so a nice regular service, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, generally, re repair should last between three or five years. We warranty all our repairs for three months, so that if anything has, um, if we've missed anything. Uh, then uh, customers can bring them back at no charge uh, and uh, we'll either rework them or generally what we find is that um, it might be something to do with the housing or the bearings as opposed to the ball screw uh, but we do take ownership of that kind of thing because essentially our customer needs to get his machine up and running and that's our focus. So it's not as simple as just changing the ball bearings essentially but you've got a full audit trail yeah, and I think effectively um, we're, we're AS9100 for our uh, machine shop, so we have to have a full audit trail. Uh, but because we make ball screws ourselves, we understand all the mathematics and the geometries that go into it. So it's not a simple case of just swapping it for bigger balls and cleaning it up and making it look shiny. We have to actually look at physically what's happening when the ball, screw, the ball bearings are racing through the tracks and whether there any of the damage could impact on the, the ball bearings ability to recirculate and therefore affect the performance of the ball screw. And you mentioned about low testing and things like that, but also so what about turnaround times? Because you know, the machine's not running, you need to get it fixed and up and running again. How long will it take you guys? Um, we can generally re repair within 24 to 48 hours, and that's because we keep a large stock of ball bearings. We keep a large stock of spare parts as well. Uh, so if any of the, the insert deflexors, for instance, are damaged, then we've generally got spare parts um, on the premises. So that means we can turn things around very, very fast. Sometimes we have people drive um, and wait for the ball screw repair. So anything really from that to about 24 to 48 hours. And it's my job in the business to make sure that I manage that through the business uh, as quickly as possible uh, so that the customer can get his machine up and running. OK, and I was going to ask some questions, but I think you've covered most, well, all of it off there. So you've got quality, very fast response times, prices and standard prices or set prices? Yeah, so we have uh, a set price list, which I think is really important because uh, in the past, um, customers haven't known really how much it's going to cost them until the ball screws in pieces when they can get a quote. Uh, whereas uh, we're very upfront with our prices and we charge the same no matter who you are, whether you're small or big. Um, our customers range from service engineers or individual end users right up to large aerospace OEMs. 
uh, and we repair ball screws for not only people in the UK but also further afield, so places like Spain and Germany, the UAE, um, we've even had ball screws from Argentina to repair. Okay, great insight into PGM, quick summary please Anne. Um, I think um, really our USP is our technical knowledge and the fact that we make ball screws and that really helps the repair process because we really understand uh, the geometries and we understand what we're doing. But we do that against the background of AS9100 certification so everything is traceable and, uh, and we do it at a fair price. And thank you very much. Thank you.